on all your desktops, you'll have the game presenter application. And towards the bottom right, you'll also have a presentation folder corresponding to your school. So let's go ahead and enter that presentation folder and we'll take a better look at everything inside. In this presentation folder, you're going to find a couple of PowerPoint files and a couple of videos. These PowerPoint files are templates. Uh, let's look at this welcome.mp4. I'm going to go ahead and open this file. This is usually the video that you'd see if you were to plug in the computer into your scoring table and open up Game Presenter. All of those different graphics that you see on the scoring table when you open up Game Presenter can be modified. So if, for example, I want to make some adjustments to this, you can open up the PowerPoint file that corresponds to that video. And we can change the text, adjust the color, and make any other changes to this video template that we want to make. We're going to adjust that to say, welcome sideline. Let's just leave it like that. So now once we've done that, and I'm happy with all my changes, I can go ahead and save this. So if I were to click on this graphic right here, you'll see that it's a video. So if I wanted to save this as a video, I'll have to head over to file, to export, create a video, create a video again. And now you just have to pick a location on the computer you wanna save this to. I'll go ahead and save it into the same folder. Since I have an older version of this video existing, it's going to replace the older version of that video. If you don't want to replace the older version of the video, you can give the video a new name. I'll label this Jesus. And you can hit save. And then you'll have two copies of that video. You'll have a progress bar down here on the bottom. And then once that video is finished processing, we can close out this PowerPoint. I'll go ahead and save the changes for now. And I should have two copies of the video. So right here I have the original that says welcome.mp4, but now I also have a Jesus.mp4. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this video onto the desktop just so we can use this as an example for our game presenter later on. Uh, many times you will get graphics that don't fit the uh, television or your LED display. And for those scenarios, you'd want to use one of the files that's in your presentation folder labeled add template. Or for some of you, it may even say sample template. So whenever you want to import a graphic that does not fit the resolution of your screens, open up your presentation folder and look for the template that says sample add template or just add template. Let's go ahead and open that right now. And here you'll see a couple of, uh, of action shots, just, you know, just regular pictures. And you can work on as many of these as you like. So if I wanted to work on another graphic, I could go ahead and just hit duplicate right here. And on this new duplicate copy, I could replace this picture on the left-hand side with a new picture on the computer or on a USB drive that I have access to. And you can make adjustments to all of these different things. You can layer things over one another. I can adjust the size of this layer. Or if I wanted to move it somewhere else, I can do that. One thing to keep in mind Right here on the right side, in this big preview, I can see the logo. But when I look on the left hand side, you'll notice that that logo gets cut off right above the helmet. So whenever you're working on these kinds of still graphics on the right hand side, you want to keep an eye out on the left hand side because that left hand side preview is more accurate to what you'll see on your table. So I'll go ahead and shift this down a bit. And I'll actually go ahead and just throw it down here. A little bit higher there we go and so now that I've made a change I'm gonna go ahead and just hit file I'm gonna go ahead and export these pictures because I want to put them in my game presenter and these are still pictures so I can actually save these as either a PNG or JPEG file 
if you do create a video, you'll still get a video with all of your pictures in a collage, but you won't have the freedom of selecting which plays first in your game presenter settings. So for that, I'm going to save these as PNG files for now. When saving a group of pictures, like the ones here in this PowerPoint, the PowerPoint will actually ask you if you want to save them as individuals or if you want to save them all in a collective folder. I'm going to go to the desktop and I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And here's that prompt that it asks you if you just want to save all of your slides together or just the one that you're working on. I'm going to just go ahead and save all the slides. There we go. And now when I close this, I don't want to save the settings. All right. And now that I close that out, I have a brand new folder here on my desktop. And when I open it up, I'll have those pictures that we were working on earlier. Makes it a little bit bigger, easier to see. There we go. And now from here, you might say, well, I finished up everything. My graphics are ready. They're ready to go up on my table. Uh, so what you just completed was the process of making the graphics, but now we actually have to load them into Game Presenter and we're going to select what team they fall under, the duration of time that each graphic will get on the tables. You have a, a couple of other things you still have to mess around with. But believe me, what takes the longest is usually making those graphics, especially when you're working through all your player lineups, it takes a bit, takes a bit of time. So. Right here on the right side, I have my game presenter application. Over there on the left side, I have a small preview of what you would see on your table, essentially. So from here on the top, you have your scoring table preview. So this is just a small preview of what you would see on your table. Uh, you can change between your different uh, slideshows and ad rotations by cl clicking on this drop down list and then selecting one of the other teams that you've created. And the same applies for the other sections as well. So if I wanted to change my players to my boys basketball, or if I wanted to change back to my girls basketball, I can just do that. Players and crowd buttons are available so if I wanted to show one of my players up on the screen for t uh, for a little bit I could do that just click on their button and they'll show up on the screen and same thing goes for some of these crowd graphics over on the right hand side you do have a music player any music that you'd want to play on the music player has to be saved locally as an mp3 file so you have to have those easily accessible to you uh, if you would rather stream your music and you have reliable internet where the table and the laptop will be set up, then you can download whatever application you'd like to use, whether it be Spotify, Apple Music, any other streaming services that you'd like to use. You can download those applications to the computer and you can rely on those to stream audio and you can connect the laptop to your sound system and use that to output all the music. On the bottom, you have an instant message section. So anything I type in this bottom section right here will take over the screen temporarily. So any kind of quick announcement you wanna make. Uh, let's head over into the settings. And I'm gonna discuss the generals tab. They can really uh, change the way they use the table. So the very first option we're seeing is the auto star ads. What that does is whenever I launch my game presenter, do I want my graphics to start immediately or do I want to press play before anything starts? Um, this is completely up to you. A lot of people like having the auto start on. So as soon as they turn on the, the, the laptop and open up game presenter, they have their graphics already slide, you know, going through, just sliding through basically. Um, right underneath it, we have the interruption mode. So. If you go back into the main menu by clicking this control panel button on the bottom right, these buttons down here that I mentioned earlier, you know, Ashlyn Hoff, Big Block, all of these little buttons that we have down here, we refer to them as interruptions because what they are doing is they're interrupting 
the ads or sponsors that are playing on the main on the main rotation. And the reason that's important is because that lets you understand what this section does a little bit better. So right now we're on automatically resume, allow your interruptions to finish. And so if I were to click on one of my crowd graphics, it'll play the crowd graphic and then once finished, it'll go back to my ads. We also have a manual option. And with manual, if I were to click on Ashlyn Hoff, she's gonna remain on screen until I press the play button right here. And that usually comes in really handy if you're doing signing days or if you just wanna have um, any you know any any graphic just constantly on the screen for a certain amount of time you want to just turn on that manual mode for a bit the other option you have available is auto resume override interrupts so this timer right underneath it will dictate how long that graphic will remain on screen regardless of how long it is so if i were to play my national anthem which will normally run around a minute and 20 seconds a minute 30 seconds around there and if i have this timer set to eight seconds you'll only have about eight seconds worth of national anthem that will play before everything goes back to your ad rotation. So in that kind of situation, you, you wanna make sure that you're on auto resume, allow your interruptions to finish. So that last part of the name is very key. Do you want your interruptions to finish or do you want them to override? Let's go ahead and save that for now. Uh, continue interruptions. This is just the way that the computer behaves whenever you uh, click on let's say one of your players and you're on your fourth graphic sponsor um, once that player's graphic is finished playing uh, do you want it to start over from the beginning or do you want it to just pick up on that fourth sponsor where you left off you know to pick up where I left off just leave this on resume you don't got to mess with this button at all keep computer from sleeping really important if you're in the middle of a game and you just don't want the computer to fall asleep on you happens to everybody before with every other computer you have luckily right here it's right in the setting so you can just leave it on and forget about it Display quick settings menu. So this option is very important. If you have uh, more than one table or if you wanna have certain sections of your table split up. So if you wanna have maybe two thirds of your table be graphics, the extra one third be a, you know, a scoreboard, you can totally do that. But that's what this option is for. Um, this is definitely something that you wanna call us up so that we can and set up for you. So just always keep that in mind too. That, that is something that you can do with your table. You can split it up into certain sections. Uh, background image is the image that shows up on your table whenever you have everything uh, stopped. So if I go back into this main screen and I press a full stop right there, uh, what you see over here on this left side is what the crowd will see, just a black screen. And sometimes that's fine, but other people, they like to have some graphics up there at least, even though nothing's playing. So in that situation, you can upload your own picture right here, just kind of like a little background picture, maybe like, you know, your, your logo or you know, whatever your mascot is, you can just throw that in there. You can at least have your mascot up on the table even if you have everything on stop. Um, player prompts, crowd prompts, and ad rotation are gonna be the main three that you're gonna be working with. Uh, definitely the most important one's gonna be that ad rotation. That So with ad rotation, this is where you're gonna have control of all of your graphics and your sponsors, which one plays first, which one plays last. So. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and actually just uh, I'm gonna just select one of the uh, the options I have available. So I'm gonna select this. So your preloaded graphics are on the left hand side, and then the option to add in more graphics is over here on the right. You can also make a brand new team. So this is now my sideline slideshow. I'm gonna go ahead and click browse right here on the right hand side. And let's get some of those graphics that we worked on earlier. So let's get that Jesus.mp4 right here. Hit save. And let's go ahead and put one of those graphics that we saved earlier as well. So let's go ahead and save uh, this one right here. So the Jesus.mp4 was a video. And Game Presenter knows that that video is 10 seconds long. So I didn't have to put it in 10 seconds long for the duration. Uh, for pictures, on the other hand, you get to choose how long you want that picture to stay up on screen. So I'm going to go ahead and save this to about 10 seconds. Bam. And so, and I want this picture to play first. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag it up above Jesus. And now when we go back to that main screen, 
I can change this to that sideline team I made. And now the graphics that I made earlier pull, uh, are pulled up on the screen automatically. And immediately after this picture, you should see that Jesus.mp4 video that we worked on. All right, so let's head back into the settings. And the reason I started off with add rotation and skipped over the players and the crowd prompts is because add rotation and player prompts and crowd prompts were built so that if you know how to do one, you know how to do the rest. Let me go ahead and pull up the player prompts. And let's go ahead and uh, let's just work off uh, girls volley triple. There we go. And, you know, I want to go ahead and add in a custom video one of my players, you know. Let's go ahead and add in that Jesus.mp4. And he's number, you know, he's number six. And some of you might have noticed that whenever I added in that Jesus graphic right here on the right, uh, it doesn't say delay time. It says number. And that's because, like I mentioned earlier in the general settings, all your interruptions are controlled by this timer in the interruption mode timer. So you can so you can just organize your teams however you normally would. And you don't have to worry about durations because the duration of the, of the pictures up on the table is going to be in this general tab. So just keep that in mind. Crowd prompts. Uh, most people leave their crowd prompts alone the way they are. If you want to add something in here, I've seen people put in halftime sponsors, charity graphics anything that you want to have quick and easy access to during a game you could put in the crowd prompts if not in the crowd prompts then you'd load it up into the add rotation and you'd have to cycle through all your graphics to get to that one picture that you're looking for but when you have an option like this it's much easier to just load in that jesus picture let's go ahead and add that one in there and now i have quick and easy access to that jesus picture whenever i'm looking for it I can just click on the Jesus button on the main menu screen. Awesome. Instant message lets you customize the font, the background color, uh, a couple of other stuff uh, for that instant message option that I showed you earlier. You can install your own custom fonts and then apply those in here. So you can get creative with all that stuff. Really nice. Uh, here's where you would customize your playlists. Uh, so right here you pick your playlists on the top the same way you've been picking your teams and your slideshows on the other sections Right here on the bottom left you have your music that's already in that current playlist and on the right bottom hand side You can go ahead and look for other files Once you load them in you can listen to a preview and then you have the file details Which you won't really be using too much but once you load in a song, you'll have the option to save, and it'll show up in the left-hand side. Uh, the last and final section is the Advanced tab. Uh, if you've gotten this far, you're pretty much done. You won't be doing much in the Advanced tab. This is definitely mostly for us whenever we're, uh, whenever we're called and you guys are having some issues, some sizing is wrong. We can always just hop into your computer and we can look at some of the settings here in the advanced tab and we can make some adjustments. One thing that I would recommend though, uh, whenever you're, whenever you're working on stuff, you know, maybe at the end of every season, at the end of every, you know, every game, whenever you make some adjustments, always, you know, just kind of every now and then hop in here and hit the export button. And then it's going to ask you this big warning. All it's saying is that, are you sure you want to make a copy of all of your files? which is perfectly fine. You're not going to lose anything on your computer. You're not going to lose anything in your game presenter. You're actually just going to have a backup of all of your files. So if you, anything ever happens to your laptop and you need us to get a hold of that stuff, we have a way of getting it. So just hit yes. And now that you did that, just give it a couple seconds. It's going to give you a little prompt saying that all of your stuff has been saved and backed up. All right. And so all of my stuff is backed up then it'll bring you a small window with all of your files uh, we don't need these right now that's all the ins and outs of game presenter if you guys have any further questions or any questions that I might not have answered during this training feel free to get in touch with me uh, you can reach me at support at sidelineinteractive.com you can call the sideline number and extension 2 that'll put you directly with me you can also uh, email me directly as well at jesus at sidelineinteractive.com and I'd be more than happy to help you guys with any issues that you're having or any questions that remain unanswered. So uh, definitely feel free to get in contact with me. I'd love to hear from you guys and I'd love to hear any suggestions.